I'm 19, I spent three days drawing Alex Hormozzi and in today's video I'm going to share with you the entire process. So let's just dive straight into it. Right, so the first thing that I need to do is I need to get a sketch and you can see here that I'm using something called the grid method and this is basically where I'm putting a grid onto my photograph and then the exact same grid in terms of like aspect ratio onto my piece of paper. So the grid on my piece of paper is actually 1.3 times bigger. Now what this does is it provides loads of reference points so it almost guarantees that like everything is definitely in the right place because it's really easy to gauge where everything needs to go and yeah it means that all the proportions are definitely correct, so it's already to start coloring in. I then go and erase all the grid lines, and what this do, I'm leaving the ones closest to Homozi himself, and this allows me to still use that grid, or the grid of that reference photo, to gauge where shadows need to go. And then what I do is I go over it with a kneadable eraser, and this removes the excess graphite that would otherwise smudge during the coloring in process. It also means that the lines are not dark enough to show through in the final result. That's pretty cool. Now, we're moving on to the alcohol markers here, and you can see here that I'm using kind of like a variety of Huhu Honolulu markers as well as some pro markers as well and the main colors for this cap I'm using a warm grays as well as some darker blues and some lighter like lilac-y colors as well and again just really jotting in a base layer here so it's kind of rough nothing like too crisp yet because I can cover that in the colored pencils a bit later and coming down here to the skin color I'm using some lighter browns some lighter yellows in the highlights obviously some darker blacks and browns in the shadows as well and for the hair and again, just really establishing where everything needs to go, just providing a blueprint for the colored pencils a bit later. And that's where we'll really bring it to life. And I'm actually gonna miss out his eyes for now. And this is because the markers are actually quite big and I don't want them in those detailed areas because if you mess up the eyes, you really do mess up the entire piece. So now moving down to the beard here, I'm using some really short strokes. And again, I'm utilizing the fact that if you use the chisel tip and you turn it around to that sharper edge, you can get some really thin lines. So I'm just using loads and loads of those really small strokes on the beard and I'm on the hair on the side here as well. I'm using the brush tip of the Ahuhu Honolulu markers just to get some really nice sweeping strokes, just establishing all the shadows there. And then on the um, shirt here, you can see that I'm using some darker strokes just to jot in where the stitching needs to go. And on the throat, just again, really basic patches of browns and some warm grays as well, as well as some beiges. And yeah, just finishing off this uh, marker base here. You never need to be too neat with this. You can see here, I'm not really focusing on blending just really providing a foundation for the colored pencils, which I'm starting at the eye here. And you can see here that I'm just outlining like the pupil and the basic structures, and then just going in with lighter colors and just blending it all together. And the exact pencils that I'm using for this are Faber-Castell Polychromos. Now, if you've ever heard of them, you'll know that they're pretty expensive, but they are pretty good. See, they're oil-based. And what this means is that they, A, they maintain their point really well because they, they're a lot harder, the leads are a lot harder than they would be if they were wax. And B is that they blend together insanely well. And they can use, they can do something that I like to call just layering. And it is basically as simple as it sounds, where you put like one color down, you then blend it all together with a lighter color, and then you go back in, just adding in some more details, and then slowly and slowly and slowly, you can just really bring it to life. So coming up to the cap here, I can really show you how this happens. So what I'm doing is I'm just adding in all the stitching and then going over with some shadows. And then I come with a lighter color and then I blend it all together. And then I come back in with those darker colors just to bring that contrast back up, just to add in some more details. And working in layers also means that you can like, you don't have to pick up on every single detail in just one go. You can like pick up on the main things that you see, go over it with a lighter color, blend it all together. And then you can come back in with those darker colors again. And then you can be like, oh, I'm coming back to this. I can, I can actually see some things that I missed that first time around. And now, yep, coming down to the skin tone here, I'm obviously using some darker browns. Some of the main colors that I was using were stuff like the cinnamon. I was using some of the beige red. Also a lot of warm grays here as well. And there was a lighter brown called the raw umber and also the brown ochre. And then, yeah, coming down to the hair here, what I was doing, I was just establishing all the darkest bits with the black pencil, then coming in with a white pencil, just establishing the highlights and then using a variety of intermediary colors just to blend between those two areas. Now, intermediary colors are colors that aren't quite as dark as the darkest ones but aren't quite as light as the lightest ones now coming back up to this skin here again just using those colors that i initially said and then coming in blending it all with the white i also use some ivory as well in the highlights just to give it a bit of a yellow tinge to him and yeah on the nose there was a bit of a darker section now coming down here to the shirt again just really kind of emphasizing what's already there from the marker base so coming in with those darker pencils just just establishing all the stitching then going over it with a lighter color blending it all together then coming back in with those darker colors adding in the details bringing up the contrast and really helping to bring it to life and layer by layer by layer just increasing the, the complexity and the number of details that you pick up upon just really helps 
because the more details you pick up upon, the more like impressive it is to look at and the more realistic it ends up looking in most cases. So now coming down to the beard. Now this beard was honestly the bane of my life. Just there's so much going on here. So what I did is I initially came in with a black pencil, just establishing the darkest shadows. I then came in with a white pencil. Again, just really using short strokes here, just like curling it around and things, because one thing you don't want to be doing with this is just having all the strands going in the same direction. So I was kind of just establishing the different clumps. So they go in different directions, different directions. Okay, now we're at the mouth. So in order to do the mouth, it may be tempting just to use reds, but I was using stuff like salmons, those beige reds and the pink matter lake. And on his teeth here, I was just going in with some warm grays, some blues, blending it all together with white pencil. And then yeah, so moving on, back over to the right here. I'm again, just adding in some more details around Alex's left eye if you're coming in this way. And then, cause I wasn't too happy with how this was looking. It was looking a bit wonky, but I think just as I um, added more details to this side, it kind of evened out a bit more. And again, just coming in here, just really building up those layers, finishing up some more of the beard, just doing what I told you about in terms of using lots of layers, establishing the clumps with the darker pencil, adding in the highlights, coming in with some intermediary colors like some of the Bistra. I use that in the beard as well in some of the um, lighter areas and also some of that dark indigo as well, just to bring that color saturation up so it doesn't look dull in comparison to like the skin color or the tunic, not the tunic, the shirt. And then again, coming over to the hair here again, it's the, pretty much the exact same story as the other side, just establishing the main clumps using the white to add in the, the highlights and yeah, that is pretty much the entire process from start to finish of how I drew Alex Hormozzi. So this actually took around 21 hours to complete. And if you'd like to learn more about any of the processes that I've discussed today, whether it's about sketching, the marker work, colored pencils, or whether you just want to draw something else, um, I have a completely free drawing community linked down below with a completely free drawing course on everything that I've covered today. And yeah, if you'd like to see more videos just like this one, be sure to hit that subscribe button and I shall see you in the next one.